Hello and welcome back to another guide to War Tales. My name is Saiken, beautiful weather inside of War Tales, and I want to today introduce you into the path of War Tales, more specifically mastering each of them. So the path, as uh, most of you know, uh, really uh, happen to level up during your normal playthrough. However, mastering them requires you to reach level 8 in the respective path. We do have the path of power and glory for anything combat related. We have traits and craftsmanship for anything traits and craftsmanship related. The scoundrel path for anything thievery, assassination and let's say not legal. And finally, the mysteries and wisdom kind of exploration path. And each of them do have, quote unquote, an epic uh, quest. Uh, so a final quest. Once you reach level eight, the respective path can be finalized. I want to give you the easy play uh, down of how each of uh, those four quests are supposed to be finished. And then uh, let's uh, review also the rewards of what they would yield. Let's start with the power and glory path, which really once you reach level eight, uh, you can upgrade and the level 12 upgrade. So the final final version requires a couple of things. Number one, you need to get the necessary uh, experience to uh, level that up. It comes just naturally when playing the game. But if you are playing particularly well as in taking no damage or um, doing all of the arenas on hard mode, then you will get even faster experience. Level 12 is a specifically nice breakpoint because each time you kill an enemy unit, you uh, will get a buff for everyone in your team for 5% extra damage for the whole duration of the fight. I cannot stress uh, enough how great that is specifically for larger warbands. All of a sudden, over time, you're accumulating just an immense bonus uh, if once you've killed 12 20 enemies, which is not uncommon if they do have reinforcements, even with smaller teams, you will have a solid 100% extra damage buff, and that is just crazy. Scales with everything multiplicatively. In order to do that, once you reach level 8, you are being invited to the Arena of Legends. And to be fair, the Arena of Legends should be done once you have done all of the other arenas, maybe with the exception of Beleriand. Um, because here you will find most of the unique enemies that you are seeing. In order to reach that, uh, you want to go from uh, Tiltran uh, into the Mount Altus region. Uh, the easiest way to get there is either, either via the Ludon region or via this kind of secret path uh, through the mountain around that uh, red nest uh, to basically get here. You want to go to exactly that spot, uh, find the Arena of Legends, and then you're being greeted with the option to Is battle the legends. Uh, each of the fights uh, mm, is available in normal mode and then in hard mode. Normal mode uh, kind of gives you typically a uh, mm, head of some sorts, whilst the hard mode uh, typically gives you an armor, generally speaking, uh, that is, there are exceptions to the rule. Um, the way that uh, the arenas work is you fight uh, through three iterative back-to-back uh, -back fights against individual champions. What I, uh, what I will recommend though is that you properly prepare yourself as those fights can be quite tough. Eat a proper meal, make sure that you do have uh, almost full Valor points before going in, kind of the absolute normal standard uh, to, to make sure that you give yourself the best chance. If you still have problems uh, beating them, you might want to consider upgrading your weapon or your armor just to make it a bit easier on yourself. I won't go too much into detail on how to do all of those fights because I want to keep the overall guide to 10 minutes. So once you have finished all of uh, these levels, you will get to the Commander Hiltred herself, uh, who, by the way, is a fantastic opponent in her own regard. You'll find uh, you'll fight three um, competitors and then on top of that her plus three reanimated competitors. So you fight four enemies at the same time. Quite a uh, quite a task, um, but it is very much worth it. So to address the elephant in the room, you will get armor that is level five ish. 
um, and needs to be upgraded. So again, I recommend doing that once you're done with all of your other game so that you can really go for end game gear. Because the reality of the situation is take um, uh, the Commander Breastplate, which is the uh, reward from the very last battle, comes in at a level 5 armor, not very great. You will need to upgrade that. That in itself is already a few thousand, so five or six thousand gold pieces gone. And then on top of that, you will need to alter it uh, via the blacksmithing in order to give it the three stars that you see here. However, once you have done that, you will get extremely good equipment. You'll get uh, Saga, a very, very powerful shield. You'll get the Commander Breastplate. You'll get the Commander Salad. You will uh, get uh, the Helm of Legends. You will get uh, Trivetter's Gambeson, you will get uh, the Spang Helm. Uh, you will, on top of uh, that, uh, get uh, the uh, Broker's Morion, as well as Lisbeth's Rescoat and Lisbeth's Helmet. So there are plenty of helmets available. Uh, you will get a couple of Light Armors, Nalrov's Cloak and Nalrov's Headband. Um, and finally, you will get Smot's Coif and Smot's Tabard plus the Trophy of the Legends, which is a unique uh, item that once per fight lets a single character use his standard attack twice. I'm using that uh, on my archer with piercing arrows just to maximize uh, the damage in the first round that's coming in. So that's really it. Pretty straightforward. Let's look at the other three pathways. Number two, which is the trade and craftsmanship pathway, even more straightforward than its predecessor. The crafts and tradesmanship, uh, once you have reached level 12, every time a companion gains a profession experience, 20% of the points are also added to their combat experience. Not necessarily great at the end game, however, pretty good in order to kind of level up a second team if you feel that that is what uh, your heart's uh, desire, what your heart desires, and you will more importantly get the benefits of the quest itself. So the uh, quest itself is actually quite simple. Um, as you are building out the uh, tradeway, a character will appear right here on the right hand side of the actual steward that allows you to travel. And said character will offer you Are per you level, uh, from level 8 onwards, five options um, to build out the passage way. Essentially how that looks like is there's going to be a green way. And there are a couple of advantages that come with that. Number one, it will be much cheaper to travel. Number two, uh, these little uh, merchants are going to open up. They come in with extra cheap wares. You can see typically half, half price if not even less uh, than that uh, for most of the stuff. So whenever you're really short on some of the resources, this is really an absolute great grab. What I'm typically doing in order to uh, to just get all of the important resources in is I scan for the crafting resources and buy whatever I need and then deposit it. So that in itself is a great reward potentially the easiest and most straightforward path. If you're anyways trading a lot, then that will come naturally to you. So moving on to the next and potentially most difficult path. So the uh, thievery path that I personally found uh, to be potentially the div most difficult one, just because it is very long. The crime and chaos path will start from level 8 onwards to give you a message that you should talk to the informant in the Tiltrin Inn that you can find right there. Uh, you simply go into the main tavern and talk to the informant. Said informant will give you a key. The follow-up keys for this quest need to be purchased by influence, so make sure that you have plenty of influence ready. And in order to complete the mission, each of the keys also comes with a message about where the next location is going to be. Each of the locations is basically a vault that you need to rob. Then after you've robbed the vault, you go to the next uh, informant, typically in the same area. They will give you a new key, rinse and repeat five times. So what I will tell you is where to find each of the vaults and how the vaults themselves look. Let's start with how the vaults look. This is how the vaults themselves look. 
So once you do have access to a vault, uh, basically what you will need to do is you will need to bring someone uh, who is a great lock picker and a lot of lock picks with you. You will see that there are four types of que uh, chests, normal chests, then uh, chests uh, with uh, the wheel on top of it, chest with a sword on top of it, and chest with the eye on top of it. And the order is normal uh, chest into sword, into eye, into wheel. So the trick is it's very similar to the uh, plagued cities. Uh, the moment that you are creating noise, uh, there is a chance that guards will come in. Uh, however, you don't know which is the uh, which one is the right chest. So you're going to start with any of the locked chest, try to unlock it in order to get a key from a swords uh, chest. Then you do have the selection of multiple swords chest. Uh, you need to find the right one uh, that will open uh, the eye chests, uh, and then you need to find the right eye chest and in the right eye chest you get the key for uh, the wheel chest it's really not that difficult it just takes a lot of iterations it's almost like memory because every single chest let's take the sword chest only one ch uh, sword chest contains the key everything else contains kind of a little alarm and once you trigger i think three alarms on expert difficulty you are essentially uh, busted and need to rinse and repeat so that is how you get the keys uh, now what is the different order and i want to make that as concise as possible number one you are starting in tiltron in the tiltron inn Location number one is down here. I'm going to mark it with a little heart, uh, which is the quest location. That is where you need to go. Afterwards, you need uh, to go to the inn in uh, Arthur's, followed up by the Vertrus province, where you need to go into Marham Castle. I put another little heart on it, so that is number two. Once you're done here, you go into the city of Marheim to get the third key, which will bring you nicely to Ludern, exactly where I'm currently standing at this house, uh, pretty much in the north of Ludern. I'll give it yet another little heart. Afterwards, you're going back to the Genusa clan into the main city, get the key, and move all the way up to the Dronbach region to New Ashel. Uh, the castle is right in there, uh, so you can get you can see yet another little heart uh, there. Afterwards, you can immediately take up the key in the local tavern and finish everything in Grosenberg in the university. This one was a bit tricky to find. But uh, once you're in the university, you just need to uh, make sure that you're on the very right side of the university. There is a little trap door, difficult to spot. So those are the locations. I mark them here, 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 um, down here and here. So those are the five locations. Once you're done with everything, uh, you will get uh, the uh, final reward, which are a couple of epic items. So it's definitely worth uh, the time investment. Also, the crime path on level 12 uh, gives a huge bonus. Every companion gets 5% critical hit chance per wanted level, which is one of the reasons why I keep my wanted level up, just to have that extra crit uh, chance. 25% is absolutely phenomenal. Just need to look out that the guards are not being unhappy. Which brings us nicely to the last path, the path of mysteries, which really is a long exploration. In order to start that, you will get an invite uh, to uh, join the companions right here in the Fellowship of Knowledge. Uh, so that'll be in the middle of the Vertrus province right here and they will hand you over a single piece of paper which you then need to 
Uh, first of all, decipher how you're going to do that is via the lectern. You go into codex management and really what it looks like is just like any other codex, you will need to do that little game in order to decipher it and get a hint. Then they also will give you an item which is uh, going to help you to find what you're looking for. It's called the pen uh, pendulum. And uh, what the pendulum does is on the normal map, it offers this little extra option, uh, the pendulum of the ancients. And uh, as long as it swings widely, you are far away from the dig side. It allows you to dig. Sometimes you're even getting a couple of uh, little uh, finds here and there. Sometimes you just uh, dig up mole rats. But in order to solve the whole thing, uh, basically, they will give you a paper, you read through it, you piece together the clues and then go to the respective locations where you uh, find uh, the, uh, the treasure. You then get the treasure, get back to the Fellowship of Knowledge, rinse and repeat five times before you are done. Every single piece of equipment or every single treasure that you get will reward you a very nice item. Uh, matter of fact, I do have all of them here. Uh, so each of uh, the benefits, so to speak, is a legendary camping gear. One of them gives you uh, damage reduction 35% from the first attack in the next round, which in itself is great. The Cradle of Souls uh, gives you zero food for a single companion, uh, which is fantastic. You basically have one less companion to take care of. Uh, the Astral Instrument gives uh, uh, the uh, movement uh, doubling via inspiration for a single companion, which again is fantastic if you need to have that extra fast companion. The Crystal Skull will give you offensive elation, which basically means the first attack of the companion is increased by 25%. Uh, and then finally the Solar System will increase the willpower of a single companion by 5%. All of them very, very good. Uh, specifically, uh, the one that gives movement uh, is my personal favorite. But at the end of the day, it's a worthwhile, nice little neat in improvement. And your camp afterwards looks absolutely fantastic. So you might ask yourself, how can I get these fine, fine uh, things? So in order, the first... Uh, mm, tip from the Fellowship of Knowledge will lead you all the way over to here, north of the Virtues province. You want to go uh, right there, take a python and find the treasure uh, where I've just pointed out. Number two will be in the Tiltron region, relatively well hidden. You will need to get, uh, I did it uh, via going above that hill uh, from uh, the Arthur's uh, region and then using pythons to go all the way down to here. Unfortunately, you cannot land with the ship, so you will need to climb there manually. Here is the second one, followed by the third one, which is in the Arthur's region itself. Very simple uh, to find. Followed by the fourth one, which is in the Ludern region up here. To be more precise, you want to go all the way up where you fight the wild hunt. And then you uh, find it very much uh, here on top of the hill before you can go down. And then number five, last but most certainly not least, is in the Drombach region, very much to the south in a little uh, valley here with a couple of polar bears. Um, so once you get up here, you get the fifth one and then uh, go back to the Fellowship of Knowledge. Once you get everything, uh, you also finish the path and the level 12 ability is all companions gain 5% uh, critical damage per discovered uh, sepulcher, which is great because if you have done your job well, then your, uh, then your sepulcher book should look in the codex management just absolutely good. Uh, so uh, you would have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, with Beleriand, maybe a seventh one, which are these uh, uh, tomes. 
uh, that you can open after you have discovered all of uh, the individual symbols. So that's another pretty uh, sizable up upgrade of your critical uh, hits. And that's really everything there is to know about uh, the different path systems. I personally liked uh, the changes to it, specifically those end game quests are, were fun. I would highly recommend you to do them as they offer a significant power boost with a lot of passive uh, additional bony to your team. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I do have a lot of guides around War Tales, so feel free to check out the other ones. As always, if you took value from this, please reciprocate by leaving a like and a comment down below and see you in the next episodes. Bye bye.